I want to provide the context and the why behind the shift to revised priorities. We aren't making a huge course correction. You did an incredible job transforming the headquarters and establishing a solid foundation as the department transition to a new national defense strategy. But now we need to focus and accelerate the command into the future. We've become extremely efficient and effective executing the fight that's been in front of us for the past three decades. We've honed our concept of operations, sharpened our tactics, techniques, and procedures, and built the force centered on our combat operations in the Middle East. However, during that time, our adversaries have been intently focused on developing the warfighting concepts and weapon systems specifically designed to defeat our capabilities. Rapid advancements in technology and the increasingly low cost and ease of diffusion have accelerated their timelines and increased their lethality. As we posture to execute a national defense strategy developed to ensure that our nation can continue to compete, deter, and win against aggressive global competitors, we face new and highly capable adversaries and frankly new contested operating environments. In his strategic approach, Accelerate, Change, or Lose, our Chief of Staff, General Brown, highlights this new and emerging global strategic environment created by our adversaries to supplant our nation's global presence and operational abilities. He also outlines how our approach to building and sharpening the force that will continue to underwrite deterrence and defeat our enemies when called upon must change. And because our competitors are beginning to outpace our current decision structures and fielding timelines, that change must be now, and it must be accelerated. Required in this change is greater integration across the services and increased collaboration with all stakeholders to deny our adversaries any seams to exploit. Our total force mobility team is absolutely critical to our nation's ability to project combat power against a peer adversary in a high-end fight. We cannot be that seen. We have to ensure we can execute our mission, enable the joint force, and provide our nation's most senior leaders credible options to execute across the competition continuum, today and tomorrow. We will capitalize on this opportunity to ensure the full range of mobility force capabilities are integrated into new joint warfighting concepts to include JADC2, the Joint Concept for Contested Logistics and Agile Combat Employment, and build the force that can execute in any environment. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to focus our energies and accelerate. Our strategic approach and the command priorities are to develop the force and advance our warfighting capabilities to maximize full spectrum readiness and generate the credible capacity required to project the joint force and ensure our nation's strategic deterrence. It all starts with developing the force. You, our Total Force Mobility Airmen, are the foundation to success. You provide the ultimate comparative advantage over our adversaries. While advanced technologies and next generation weapon systems are absolutely an essential part of the equation, in the end, they will not win the day. They're simply tools, tools developed and leveraged by you. You will be the ones coming up with new operational concepts. You will be the ones rapidly integrating current and emerging technologies. And you will be the ones executing, leading, and making tough decisions in dynamic, ambiguous, and uncertain environments. You are the strength of this command. We're going to build, train, develop, and sharpen the force for the future high-end fight. In developing the force, this is where we will focus. We have to start with resiliency. We have to build and enhance resiliency in ourselves and in our families. Resiliency is not avoiding failure or being absent from adversity. It's experiencing challenges and having the ability and fortitude to recover, learn, and be better for the next time. The speed and complexity of the future high-end fight demands that we exercise and enhance our ability to adapt to new situations. We're going to develop courageous, warfighting-focused leaders of strong character. 
Courageous leaders have the fortitude to stay the course when right, despite all pressures and temptations to shift to what's easy or popular. Being courageous is also about having the fortitude to revector when wrong, or when new information makes a different course of action the right choice. Most importantly, courageous leaders embrace the idea that it's okay to say when you need help. It's also imperative that we stay focused on the future high-end fight. Our adversaries have spent the last 30 years strictly focused on developing the ways and means to negate our ability to execute the mission. Developing the people, concepts, and capabilities that will win against aggressive competitors across the competition continuum must remain at the forefront of our minds and be the lens through which we view everything that we do. Strong character is essential to leading in dynamic, complex, and ill-defined environments. Decisions won't be easy. All the information won't be available. And you will be faced with problems your predecessor never had to think about. Strong character will provide the strength, determination, and ethical compass necessary to build and lead diverse, inclusive teams in ambiguous environments. We will also develop multi-capable and digitally adept airmen. Multi-capable airmen provide force multiplying effects both in garrison and forward deploy. Tasked to deploy in small teams and open air bases in combat environments, our contingency response double raiders represent the best example of multi-capable airmen and are the model being replicated across the Air Force. While performing their primary AFSCs, they are also skilled in others. they are maintainers providing base defense, airfield managers driving forklifts, and port dogs marshalling aircraft. But the multi-capable concept applies across the force. Regardless of AFSCs, it means providing expanded capability and capacity within your unit. Technical Sergeant Aaron Whittemore provides a great example of a multi-capable airman. In addition to his duty AFSC, he's also a green belt in process improvement and well on his way towards earning his Bachelor's of Science degree in cyberspace security. Imagine the force multiplying capabilities he now brings, not only to his unit, but to the installation. Digitally adept airmen thrive at solving complex problems and developing advanced capabilities by combining digital technologies with innovative processes. Developing a digitally adept force requires a holistic building block approach that starts with enhancing our digital literacy or the foundational knowledge and understanding of the digital environment. We can't capitalize on game-changing capabilities if we don't even know they exist. We must build awareness of the digital environment and bring those capabilities into our problem-solving processes. Building upon a foundation of knowledge, we will identify and create avenues and opportunities for airmen to upskill their digital literacy into tangible skill sets. Developing a digitally adept force does not mean everyone's going to be a professional coder. That's not what we're after. What we are after are innovative airmen who think differently about solving complex problems by leveraging data, analytics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning to make faster, better informed decisions. A great example of a digitally adept airman is Staff Sergeant Santosh Devkota from the 69th Aerial Port Squadron. Sergeant Devkota, while deployed to Al Udeed Air Base, combined his prior coding experience with additional skills he learned on YouTube to develop an automated offline passenger processing system. You see, while deployed, his team was stuck with manually processing passengers during a two-week Gates outage. By combining innovation with digital skills, Sergeant Defcoda reduced a process that would normally take 10 to 15 minutes into an automated two to three minute task. Merging digital technologies with innovative ideas is exactly what being digitally adept airmen is all about. We're also going to develop airmen who are competitive, curious, and biased towards action. We have to be competitive in everything we do even down to the small things. Competition is a mindset that makes us better. It challenges us to be better, to do better. Now, to an extent, we already compete outside the workplace in day-to-day -day things, such as sporting events and video games like Call of Duty. 
We have to apply that mindset towards building full spectrum readiness and credible capacity for the high-end fight. From maintenance reliability rates to on-time takeoffs to spark tank submissions, competition will drive us to new and better ways to getting after the mission. We have to be curious. When we're curious, we ask questions. When we ask questions, we find out why. And when we find out why, we gain a better understanding of how we can do better, go faster, eliminate useless requirements or regulations, gain the right authorities, and bring desperate parts together to gain an enhanced common operating picture. Curiosity is the catalyst to divergent thinking. And divergent thinking is the driving force that leads us to solutions to complex problems, to new warfighting concepts and capabilities, and agile capability development. However, simply having these attributes is only half the equation. We will fall short if we fail to apply them. We have to be biased to action. We have to own our spheres of influence, always asking, how can I make this better? And then develop a plan of action to get after it. We have to embrace and champion and innovate, execute, and learn methodology. We cannot wait until we have it 100% right before moving out. Continuous improvement requires action. Our next priority is advancing our warfighting capabilities. We have to be clear-eyed about the fact that rapid advances in technology have allowed our adversaries to degrade our military comparative advantages. We are integral to the joint fight. The joint force cannot execute at the speed and range required without rapid global mobility. We must advance our warfighting capabilities to increase joint force advantages across the competition continuum and ensure that we can deliver mobility effects from generation at home station to employment across the battle space. Advancements in situational awareness, self-defense, autonomy, and integration of our aircraft and forward deployed teams are all essential to ensuring their increased effectiveness, resiliency, and survivability. A great example of mobility airmen advancing our warfighting capabilities is Captain Andrew Kerr and Master Sergeant Kenneth Pryor from the 305th Operation Support Squadron. Their work in developing a plug-and-play capability that improves our battle space awareness, enables dynamic retasking, and captures secure beyond line of sight communications is helping the command push the envelope and expand our capabilities required for the high-end fight. We can no longer assume sanctuary at our bases. We will have to fight to get to the fight. We must advance the security and resiliency of our installations, both CONUS and forward, to provide mission assurance for the joint force. Advancements in the security of our bases to defeat expected attacks across multiple domains and enhancements of the resiliency within our bases to minimize both the effects of an attack and the time required to get back into the fight are fundamental to our ability to continue to provide rapid global mobility for the joint force. Our adversaries will attack our ability to command and control forces at all echelons. Therefore, we must advance our ability to provide secure global command and control as integral nodes of the mesh network. Advanced battle management system technologies enabling joint all-domain command and control must be integrated into our aircraft, forward deployed contingency response and agile combat employment teams, and our 618th Air Operations Center. What we do is a physics problem. Delivering, refueling, recovering, and enabling. We have to advance our ability to beat those physics. Striving towards achieving information and decision dominance by leveraging sensors, information clouds, advanced digital infrastructures, and data analytics. Our goal is better informed, data-driven mobility decisions at all echelons to keep the joint force synchronized across the competition continuum and execute at speeds that paralyze our adversary's ability to recognize and react. Most importantly, we must embrace a rapid, agile capability development mindset that provides advanced capabilities to the warfighter faster. By operationalizing our innovate, execute, learn methodology, we will aggressively expand upon current capabilities 
as we build and develop the force that will continue to win today and tomorrow. Together, these OT&E focused priorities, develop the force, advance warfighting capabilities, will maximize our full spectrum readiness and generate the credible capacity required to execute our next two priorities, project the joint force and ensure strategic deterrence. As the air component to United States Transportation Command, AMC is the most agile arm of the nation's joint deployment and distribution enterprise and critical enabler of the department's dynamic force employment. The Joint Force stands on our shoulders to rapidly deliver combat power anywhere in the world, and we are the backbone to our nation's humanitarian aid and disaster response. As our finest crews from Charleston demonstrated to the world, only the United States Air Force and only AMC can deliver the 82nd Airborne's immediate response force halfway around the world in a matter of hours to halt the aggressive actions of a belligerent government. We project decisive strength across contested domains and deliver hope always, and we are integral to the joint fight. Therefore, we will prioritize our ability to project the joint force by ensuring our ability to conduct operations in and through contested environments and deliver mobility effects at the speed and scale required for our nation to compete, deter, and win. Vital to this effort, we'll be informing and fully integrating into the new operational warfighting concepts to include the joint warfighting concept, the joint concept for contested logistics, and the Air Force's new joint all-domain operations doctrine. As the department accelerates towards a joint solution-focused, maneuver-based military, dominant in all domains, Air Mobility Command will increase targeted efforts to enhance interoperability within the joint force. We will also aggressively pursue opportunities to expand upon traditional mission sets and provide the Joint Force increased advantages in the future high-end fight. Tankers with advanced communication capabilities operating as integral command and control nodes in the mesh network. Airlift platforms serving as force multipliers carrying attributables or other advanced capabilities to enhance interoperability across the Joint Force. And multi-capable mobility airmen enabling agile combat employment across the theater these are all examples of initiatives AMC is already getting after to expand upon traditional roles and increase our ability to project the joint force. As we accelerate change and integrate advanced technologies and warfighting capabilities across the total force mobility enterprise, we must deliberately leverage joint high-end training, exercises, and war games to further our innovate, execute, learn methodology and provide across the joint force, an increased awareness of and proficiency in the new capabilities mobility airmen bring to the fight. We must also adapt the way that we integrate these new technologies into our training methods. A great example of airmen doing exactly this comes from the B-liners of the 21st Airlift Squadron at Travis Air Force Base. There, Major Raleigh Schubert, Major Bain Weir, and Captain John Jebo are accelerating their three-pronged approach to acquire and synchronize the training, processes, and equipment to enhance the MAF's ability to project a joint force in and through contested environments. We provide the nation unique capabilities unmatched by any Air Force in the world. We will ensure our efforts remain intently focused on our ability to project a joint force in any environment across the entire competition continuum so that our nation can compete deter and win today and tomorrow. Our final priority is to ensure strategic deterrence. With the reemergence of great power competition, focused efforts and aggressive actions by other nations to modernize, expand, and develop their nuclear capabilities, and with the increased salience of nuclear forces in their strategies and plans, our nation now faces a more diverse and advanced nuclear threat environment than ever before. Credible nuclear capability underwrites our national security and allows our most senior leaders to speak from a position of strength. It provides the strategic deterrence from both nuclear and non-nuclear aggression, assures our allies and partners, and it's the backstop behind our conventional capabilities. 
As a critical enabler to our nation's nuclear capabilities, we will ensure strategic deterrence by providing assured air refueling and airlift support to our nation's nuclear response, and by enabling diplomacy through our support to presidential and senior leader support missions. These are no-fail missions for us, and we will prioritize our ability to continue to execute regardless of the environment, because we use deterrence daily to ensure America's freedoms and way of life are protected. Our tankers are an integral enabling capability to the nuclear response. They provide the fuel not only to our strategic bombers, but also our airborne national command centers. Maintaining credible capacity within our tanker fleet to support the nuclear mission will remain a top priority. A great example of action-oriented airmen ensuring the credibility of our nuclear response capabilities is Lieutenant Colonel Laura Lim from the 108th Wing at Joint Base McGuire-Dix Lakehurst. Overcoming COVID restrictions, Lieutenant Colonel Lim spearheaded a combined effort with the command's IG team to virtually inspect the wing's most recent nuclear operational readiness exercise, which resulted in the command's first ever virtual nuclear operational readiness inspection and validation of the wing's nuclear response capabilities. Also strengthening the nation's nuclear enterprise is our specialized prime nuclear airlift force team. These selectively chosen, highly qualified mobility airmen responsible for providing the no-fail airlift of our country's most dangerous weapons, provide the most reliable aircraft, the most reliable air crew, and the most reliable plan to guarantee nuclear surety during nuclear airlift support missions. Major Patrick Warfel, one of this year's AMC Dutch Heiser Award winners, provides the perfect example of how our specialized nuclear airlift teams ensure strategic deterrence by safeguarding the security of the nation's nuclear weapons. While executing a nuclear airlift mission, Major Warfel led the first ever airborne nuclear divert to a non-storage location. Coordinating with multiple command centers, Major Warfel was able to rapidly get the mission back on track with the net result of only a one hour mission delay. Throughout the entire unprecedented event, Major Warfel and his crew maintained perfect nuclear surety of their cargo, which directly maintained the credibility of the nation's nuclear strategic deterrence capabilities. Integral to a rapid and credible nuclear response is Assured Nuclear Command, Control, and Communications, or NC3. As nuclear orders and authorizations originate with the Commander-in-Chief and must be executed within seconds of receipt, a survivable and effective NC3 system is of paramount importance. As critical members of the nation's nuclear response force, it's of absolute highest priority that we provide uninterrupted mobility command and control capabilities that solidify NC3 links with our national command authority. To do so, AMC will aggressively pursue enhancements across command posts, aircraft, and the 618th Air Operations Center to guarantee that we can remain connected in all environments, regardless of threat. Strategic deterrence is also enabled by diplomacy. As the command responsible for delivering the president and our nation's most senior leaders to diplomatic engagements around the world, we will ensure our efforts remain focused on our ability to execute that no-fail mission in degraded environments. Developing the force, advancing our warfighting capabilities, projecting the joint force, and ensuring strategic deterrence are the four priorities in which we will focus our efforts and accelerate our capabilities into the future. Foundational to and within each priority is one key element, innovation. Innovation is foundational to securing rapid global mobility advantages over our adversaries. The catalyst to innovation is curiosity. Curiosity leads to divergent thinking and divergent thinking can change the world. To maintain comparative advantages over our adversaries and always provide our senior leaders rapid, agile, and resilient mobility options requires an infinite mindset, as described by Simon Sinek, with a clear understanding that competition never ends, only the players change. There is no definitive win or lose. It's more like temporary advantage or disadvantage. Staying ahead means always changing, coming up with new ways and means, always adapting, not accepting things for what they are, but for what they can be.
and breaking out of the finite mindset and changing the game altogether. Let me close by saying we own this. The future of the command is up to us. It's up to us to set and accelerate this command on the trajectory that will ensure rapid global mobility capabilities for the joint force, our nation, our allies and partners in any environment today and tomorrow. We are and we will remain integral to our nation's ability to project combat power anywhere in the world on a moment's notice. We will be ready. The time is now. Don't wait. Accelerate.